There's been an incident at a farm near Framlingham. A man called John Jarrell, some sort of casual labourer, shot in the head and left to rot for a week. So it's not very nice. John Jarrell, what sort of a name is that, do you think? Well, that's what he called himself. There's no ID, there's no passport, no credit card, no bills, nothing. Could have been anyone. And someone put a bullet in him. Mm. From three paces. Mm-hmm. You once knew my client? Yes, Martin Newell. We studied law together at Cambridge. You hadn't heard that he'd been arrested? Murder, yeah. His secretary. He says he's innocent. I don't take on murder cases. But you used to. And you were extraordinarily successful. For God's sake, Will, this is crazy! You said you would never take on another murder case after what happened. I know. So you can't just go back on a whim. Oh, no, <laughs> this is not a whim. years. You haven't changed much. You have. Oh, I think that's mainly the last few days. May we sit down? Go back, please. I'm afraid there's not much in the way of hospitality I can offer you. No. You're not here for the hospitality. I didn't think you were going to come at all. I'm glad that Natalie was able to persuade you. I don't think I did. Mr. Travers still has some questions. How's Jane? She's one. Your daughter? Yes. Kate, 19. I have a son. Mm. But my first marriage. Did you know that Gemma and I split up? No, no. I didn't. This is very hard on him. He's 15. David. I'll show you a photograph only. They haven't even allowed me to keep my wallet. All my life, not even so much as a parking ticket and now this. I seem to remember you being arrested once. Drunk and disorderly. <laughs> you got away. Faster runner. You were always faster than they were. Great at athletics. Everything you did. Full of your career. Impressive. So, are you going to tell me all about it? Of course. Everything. Are you going to represent me? That depends. I didn't do it well. I swear to God. She's already given a statement. She may not be in. Of course she's in. She's 83. She's got nowhere to go. They 
take their time getting down the stairs. Yes? This is Davis. My name is Wen Bourne. This is Detective Sergeant Taylor. Can we come in, please? Tell me about the girl, Martin. Lucy Wilson. That was her name. She worked in the legal department at Kestrel. She was a junior secretary. She hadn't been there more than a few months. She worked for me and three others. And you were sleeping with her? Yes. Take these off first. Yeah, no, you have to take them off. It wasn't even an affair, really. It was just stupid, drunken, pathetic. I was so cross myself because I've never been unfaithful to Caroline before. Never. And what about Gemma? That wasn't why we divorced. No, look, w w would it make a difference to you if I told you that it was Lucy who more or less seduced me? I mean, I know it doesn't excuse what I did, but it is the truth. She was young, you know? I was very flattered. She came up through the temp pool or something. Uh, and she just did general work uh, in legal. But I'll be honest with you, I was attracted to her almost immediately. I don't think I was the only man who felt that way either. Coffee? Well, thanks. Oh, cappuccino. Where'd you get that, then? I went to the shop around the corner. The office coffee's disgusting. Oh, you're right there. <laughs> and um, here is the itinerary for your Cairo trip. I uh, changed the room for you. You want an odd-numbered room on the top floor. They've got the best views of the Nile. Thanks for that. OK. How do you know? Um, roomrequirements.com? It's on the internet. Did you do a lot of travelling? Not really, no. Occasional trips. Middle East, yeah. yeah well, Kessel's now the third or fourth largest oil trader in the country, so most of the work's done from behind a desk, but sometimes it helps to go and meet the buyers, get an idea of their position. So, Mrs. Davies, tell us again what you saw. There was a car. It was in the small hours. We saw it from a bedroom window. Oh, you weren't asleep? I was asleep, and I woke up. I don't know why. I never sleep very well anymore. So I got out of bed, went over to the window. Well, why'd you do that then? I just did. I'm point lying in bed if you can't sleep. So you heard the car? I didn't hear it. I saw it turning off the main road coming from Framlingham, and it pulled in by the footpath. You didn't see the driver? No. And the colour of the car? I don't know. It was dark. What, the colour? The night. There's no moon. Right, so no sign of the number plate. I did think it was a bit strange car stopping at that time of night. Thought it might be young people. They come here sometimes. Did you ever meet Gerald? Saw him once or twice, walking past. We never spoke. You said you didn't hear the car. That's right. But it drove straight past. Well, the engine wasn't making any sound. It's one of them um, electric ones. What, you mean like a hybrid? Well, I don't know what the word is. Um, well, why didn't you say so? I just did. No, I mean, why didn't you tell the police officers when they came round two days ago, you daft old bat? What did you call me? Nothing. I just asked about the car. You called me names. No, I didn't. Did I tell you a lot? What sort of hybrid was it, Mrs Davis? Was it, was it like a Toyota Prius or maybe something bigger like a Lexus? Or... I don't know. It was dark. Went past and stopped. That's all that's all. So, how did it begin? The affair. It was uh, after work, a drink, and then it just sort of happened. More than once? Yes. Tell me about the last time. We went to this uh, 
Well, there's a hotel uh, near the office called The Avenue. And that's where I took her. Well, that's where she wanted to go. Well, she chose it. She even chose the room. I like it here. Can we stay all night? No, we can't. I've got to get home. But not yet. No. Not yet. I love Egyptian cotton. I love the feel. <laughs> You're extraordinary, Lucy. What do you see in me? Tell me. Older men. That's such a terrible cliche, but it's true. I'm starving. Well, there's a room service menu here. I don't want room service. I want a milkshake and fries. <laughs> You're not serious. I'll let them do fries here. I want curly ones. Well, there's that place near the office. No. Oh, that's very romantic, isn't it? You won't even get me a bag of curly fries. It's miles away. It's around the corner and you know it. I'm absolutely sure. I want a chocolate milkshake. And then I want a bag of curly fries. And then I want you. She wanted me to go to this place called the diner. It's about 10 minutes away. I felt a bit silly, to be honest with you, but uh, she was young. I wanted to please her. Curly fries. Excuse me, have you got the time, please? 8.40. Thank you. Beastly night out there. I felt I had to get home. Caroline will be expecting me around 10. Room sub. was staring at her. Oh. It was horrible. My first instinct was to run. Get the hell out of there. You know, I was thinking of Caroline. I was thinking, how was I going to explain this to her and David? But you didn't run. You called the police. Once I got my head together a little bit, I realized you I checked into the hotel in my own name. I'd use my own credit card. My fingerprints would be everywhere. Running away would be like admitting that I'd done it. If you didn't, who did? I don't know. I don't know who could do that. But there were two things. On the way to the hotel, Lucy seemed very nervous. Hey, what is it? I don't know. I thought I saw someone. Don't be silly. No one saw us leave. I think we're being watched. Oh, bye. I don't know. Nah. Nope, there's no one there. I think we're being watched. Like a line out of a bad film. Yeah, I don't disagree. What else? That was all she said. You said there were two things. Oh, the computer. Uh, Sony Vio. I took it with me to the hotel. It was in the room. But later, the police couldn't find it. Someone must have taken it. And what was on it? Files, names, figures. A lot of confidential information. A lot of it price sensitive. I shouldn't have been carrying it with me. Not the computer. Know the information. See, you've got to understand that the whole business of oil trading is about what you know at a particular time. So the really important stuff, the stuff that your competitors want, should never leave the office. But what was it doing on the via? Because there aren't enough hours in the day. I had to take it home just to keep up. 
There were enough hours in the day for you and Lucy Wilson. Yes, there were. Got the report on the tires. Near the tire tracks found near John Gerald's place. Go on. Well, they're OE Goodyears, designed for low rolling resistance, and they're quite often found on the Honda Civic Hybrid. Or you can get them on Toyotas too. Good. What about Gerald's DNA? Well, that's gone down to London along with the fingerprints. If they've got anything on him, we'll know by tonight. Something wrong? Can I have an opinion, sir? You can answer the question. I just don't believe that you spoke to that woman that way, you know, this morning, Mrs Davis. You got a problem with it? Well, she might report you, sir. There were two of us in the room, you and me, so I'd have backup, wouldn't I? She misheard me. I don't understand why you had to insult her. She held back information. Listen, get something into your head, OK? What we've got here is something unusual. Someone in a nice car drives into the middle of the countryside with a gun. He knows where Gerald lives. He breaks in while Gerald is in bed and shoots him in the head. Nothing is stolen. There's no sign of a fight. This isn't just a murder. Then what is it? I'd say it's an execution. So, you're suggesting someone broke into the hotel room, killed Lucy Wilson, to steal your computer? I'm not suggesting anything, Will. I'm just telling you how it was. You said you went back to the room after you'd got the food. Mm. What about the door? What about it? Was it locked? Yes. I used my swipe key. Room sir. No. Oh, wait a minute. It may have been open. Room sir. Can't remember. But if, if, if it was open, it would mean that Lucy had let someone in. No, not necessarily. You know, the police report said that she'd been grabbed from behind. <laughs> And if it had been a stranger at the door trying to force their way in, she would have put up a fight and there'd be some sign of it on her hands or on her face. Anyway, why would she let anyone in unless it was you? Do you think someone else let themselves in well, with another key? It's a possibility. I, I know how this looks, Will. I I'm not asking for your sympathy. I don't deserve it. But I am appealing to the friendship that you and I once had. Yeah. And for three years, you and I, and Jane, you remember? We were close. Did he kill her? No. Mr. Newell's bail hearing is fast approaching. We will need your decision. So? I'll think about it. This might be a lucky day, Mark. And normally, we wouldn't be able to tell very much from a bullet that's been fired at close range in our man's head. Don't tell me this time the killer signed his initials into it before he fired. Well, as a matter of fact, that's more or less exactly what he did do. Not the killer, though. The supplier. Go on. The bullet was a 9 millimeter, probably a parabellum or a luger. But under the microscope, we found out a distinctive marking as a you might say a groove to one side. It'll have been caused by cord wear on the muzzle, and that, in turn, will have been the result of the gun having been cleaned wrongly. Not once, but several times. You heard of Mr. Cripps? Is he the supplier? Well, in the past couple of years, we've had three guns turn up with the same cord wear. So it's quite possible that the man who supplied them has a disability. You understand? When he cleans his guns, the cleaning rod Scratches the bore, leaves a signature. Mr. Cripps. Cripps the cripple. I didn't come up with a name, but that's what we call him. 
So all I've got to do is find a gun dealer with one hand that's gone spazzo. <laughs> I see you lost none of the delicacy for which you're renowned. But I'm right. Well, this man, he may or may not even exist. It's just a supposition. Have you got details of the other three guns? I'll get the details from my database. All three crimes took place in this county. And the feeling is that Mr. Cripps, he works out of Felixstowe. A lot of makes sense. You find all sorts of shite in Felixstowe. I'll print out the details for you. I should tell you, though, we've already looked for this man without success. That could be because you're all incompetent twats. Delicacy and charm. You look wonderful, Chen. Country life obviously agrees with you. Then why are you trying to tempt me back? Desperation. God, you are such an house movie. I try my best. <laughs> so what about it, Jen? Seriously, the office there on the table. Full autonomy. Your authors all miss you, but you don't have to take them all back on. You can develop your own list. It's funny, you know, there is some... something. What would you say to publishing the work of a young offender? I imagine the marketing department would like it. And certainly get us into the Sundays. Henry, that is not the point. Is this one of the young men you're teaching at um... Paxton Hall? Yeah, yeah. He's written a book. Well, yes, yeah, ten thousand words. He gave it to me to look at, and of course I thought it'd be rubbish, but it isn't. It's um, it needs work, but it's actually it's it's rather brilliant. It's a children's book. No, it's more of a crossover, like Mark had. You know, it's a psychological thriller. How old's the author? About seventeen. And what did he do to end up in Paxton Hall? I don't know. We need to find out. Even the curious incident wouldn't have sold if it had been written by a rapist. I can ask a few questions. And can you send me a copy? Actually, um, I have it here. That's what I like about you. Thinking ahead. There you are, you see? Your first commission. I haven't said yes yet. But you will. Mr. Travers? Bill Travers? Yes? It's Gavin Brooke. <laughs> yes, yes, look, of course. How are things? Yeah, good, very good. Very good to see you. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm just, just visiting. Are you still in Ipswich? Yeah, yeah. And everything is, uh, okay? Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, fine. So how, how are things in Chambers? They're good. We're all busy. We miss you. Oh, well, that's, that's very kind. You're welcome to look in if you want to. Janice is still there and Andrew. They'd love to see you. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'd really like to, but I have a, a meeting. OK. Well, I will uh, let them know I saw you. Yes, do, do. <laughs> all right, goodbye. Goodbye. Nice to see you. Bye. Are you staying? I'm not sure yet. Why? Do you want to get rid of me? That's not what I meant. <laughs> Are you alone? Who else would be here? Hmm? And if you're going to stay here, Dad, no cross examinations. <laughs> I'm just curious. Sorry. 
And I can't believe you're back working in London again. After everything you said. Yeah, you know, people change their minds, don't they? Why? Why are you here? I knew the defendant. We were at Cambridge together. And Mum? Yeah, that's how we first met. Yeah, Martin and I were on the cricket team. She was the umpire. No. <laughs> no, but she did used to come and watch us play. Yeah, summer afternoons at Milton. He was the bowler, I opened the batting. I sort of feel like I owe him. But it won't... You know, it won't make you ill again, taking on the case. No. No, darling. No, I put all that behind me. Dad? Don't worry. I'm fine. Oh, come on, darling. Yeah. I know. This Come on, I'll be on early tonight. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I thought we might go out. Steak and chips. <sighs> it's a bit short notice. I'll have to find someone for Claire. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Put a damper on it. That's not fair, Mark. I just said... Then I asked. <sighs> I'll ask Tracy. She might be able to come in. Yeah? OK. You do that, my darling. Hey, come on. Oh, Ta-da. <laughs> No one from the company's even rung me. Can you believe that? Mrs. Newell. Caroline. I just wish people would understand him, that's all. You know, that girl threw herself at him. That's the truth. She was shameless. You don't believe he killed her? No, of course he didn't. Well, you were at university with him. You knew him. It's a long time ago. Oh, he's a good man. We've had seven years together and we've been completely happy. I know he was with that girl and I know it was wrong of him, but he's so ashamed of himself and, well, I've tried to understand. Have you? Yes. It was just a man thing, wasn't it? It was just sex. And what's sex at the end of the day? It's just a game. Love is what matters. And I know that Martin loves me. Well, you're very forgiving. I think he's been very stupid. It's clear to me that Lucy Wilson was just using him. What for? For promotion, or maybe it was something to do with work. Mm. You know his computer was taken from the hotel room? Yes, he, uh, he told me. Well, whoever killed Lucy Wilson took Martin's laptop. They waited for him to leave and then they went in. They knew exactly what they were doing. I'm not sure that poor girl had anything to do with it. It was the computer they were after. You're saying he was targeted? Martin didn't kill that girl. He was set up. Is that him? Yeah. William Travers. He was a big noise once upon a time. He had a reputation. What for? Oh, anti establishment. A crusader on the side of the underdog. Page nine of The Guardian, if you know what I mean. And he's representing Newell? If he represents Newell, he'll look into Castro. And if he looks into Castro, there's no knowing what he might find. Well, maybe Mr. Newell should think again. When I wake up, I see a wall. And then there's no hope at all. There have been walls my whole life through. That like nobody's let me do what I wanted to do. Always treating me like a fool. That's very good, Darren. Very good. Does anyone want to make a comment? It's crap. I don't think it is crap, Simon. Fool doesn't rhyme with wall. Well, it doesn't have to. Not all poetry rhymes. It was not poetry then, innit? Well, the poem was an interesting metaphor. Darren looks at the walls of this prison and he imagines the real walls in his life that stopped him doing what he wanted. He wanted to mug old ladies, he managed that. <laughs> <coughs> 
Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Look, I hope you've all got your copies of Private Peaceful. It's a brilliant book, and that's what we're reading next. All right, back to yourselves. <sighs> so what would you? <laughs> Alan? What are you plan to do later? I wonder if I could have a word. Uh -huh. I read your story. What do you think? Did you enjoy writing when you were at school? Yeah. <laughs> Did the teachers encourage you? What do you think of it? I was very surprised. I, I think it has a lot of promise. Can you publish it? Well, it's it's a bit early for that. I mean, you'd have to finish it first. Yeah, I, I can finish it. I, I know what happens. Well, look, I don't want to give you any false hopes, but you should definitely keep going. How long are you going to be in here for? I'm not going anywhere. Not till I'm 18. And then? Adult prison. Right. Um... Well, you could finish it before then, couldn't you? If, uh, if I had a computer, I could finish it right away. <sighs> I suppose I could always ask the governor. I really like the setting, Felix, though. I mean, you seem to know it very well. I lived there. Did you? Near the sea? Uh, 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 no addresses. No, of course not. Right, well, if you're finished, I'll show you out. You won't get a computer, so I won't mention it again if I were you. They get PlayStations. Yeah, they won't get those either if I had my say. So they get PlayStations, but they're not allowed computers. What's the logic in that? When you work in the prison service, you know logic doesn't come into it, Mrs. Travers. It's not part of our job, is it? You know, you should read what he's written, Mr. Cooper. Alan's got talent. Yeah, lots of it. And look where it's brought him. Mr. Travers. I will represent him. That's very good news. Martin will be delighted. Thank you. At the bail hearing, as for the case itself... Yes? I'll see him in the morning, but there is something you're going to have to understand. I don't believe that he killed Lucy Wilson, at least. It seems as if there's enough evidence to suggest otherwise. But if I change my mind, if at any time I come to think that he is, in fact, guilty, I will walk. I can't accept those conditions. If you were to walk out on him, it would be enormously prejudicial to his case. Those are the only conditions under which I would accept your instructions, Miss Chandra. And I need you to make that absolutely clear to your client. I simply can't defend him if he's guilty. There are barristers defending guilty men all over London. You know that. Not me. Can I be honest with you, Mr. Travers? Of course. You're not the barrister I would have chosen to defend my client. And if he'd listened to me, you wouldn't be here now. Is it true you visited Caroline Newell this morning? Yes. You interviewed her without my being present. <laughs> that can't happen again, not if we're going to work together. Except we're not working together. You're working with me. It's not quite the same thing, is it? So, I'll see you at Wellesden tomorrow. There are barristers defending guilty men all over London, you know that. Not me. I didn't order champagne. Oh, oh, you better take that back. My wife says it's been a mistake. <laughs> yeah, now go on, open it. Thought we'd splash out. It's been a while since we went out, and uh, maybe I'm celebrating. You've got a new case. That's right. I can always tell. Quite a little detective, aren't you? <laughs> Comes a living with you. It's a high-profile murder. Someone got shot at a farmhouse in Framlingham. Were they killed? Of course they were. It wouldn't be a murder, would it? <laughs> Animal rights activist, by the look of it. Maybe it was someone from the local hunt. They banned hunting. Was it a shotgun, then? No, a pistol. Hey, I could show you the post-mortem photographs, if you like. <laughs> Not what I'm about to eat. Ta, mate.
got a feeling about this one. Something a bit special, you know? Something a bit different. It'll be a real feather in your cap if you solve it. What do you mean, if? Of course you will. It's gonna be in the newspaper. It might even be on the telly. What should we drink to, then? I know, to crime. Crime? Yeah, crime. Without it, I wouldn't have a job, would I? Straightforward. Last time the magistrates refused bail because they accepted the prosecution argument that you might abscond. It's the industry that's the problem. Private planes, private ships, a lot of travel. We'll persuade them otherwise. How many passports do you own? Just the one. Be prepared to surrender it. Not a problem. What do you want me to say? You don't say anything. You just leave that to me. They'll demand a surety, a payment. It may be a lot of money. I've got savings. You're going to need them. I have just one other question for you. The laptop you said was stolen from your room. Did anyone else see it? Wait a minute. There, no, there, there was a, There was somebody. There was. She came to turn down the bed. A, a Korean girl, I think. Housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. You want some turn down service? I think we can turn ourselves down, thanks. Sorry to disturb you. <laughs> She opened the door and she was standing there, outside the room, which she may have seen it. The police don't even believe the computer was there. We'll find her and we'll talk to her. Thank you, Judy. And uh, Olivia, we won't be taking minutes. So, what was on the computer? He says nothing. It would all have been encrypted anyway. And what about the Agadir file? Nothing. Nobody's mentioned it. This barrister, Travers, he's no reason to look into her affairs. He will if he believes the girl was killed to get at the computer. And was she? Well, that would be extremely worrying. And you all didn't know about the Agadir dates. It was kept deliberately out of the loop. No, he killed the girl because he was screwing her and she was going to make trouble. Let's hope the court agrees. William Travers! Well, well, well. I'd heard the defence had gone to some chambers out in the sticks, so I had no idea it would be you. How are you, Jeremy? Surely I should be asking you that. I'm so sorry to hear about your illness. Yeah, I got better. And now you're back. We're well, good for you. It was Norfolk, wasn't it? it must have been very dull. Suffolk, actually. Ah. Yeah. But good to see you still have your unerring grasp of the facts. Mr. Forbes Watson. The Crown opposes bail on the following grounds. First of all, this is a grave offence which has inspired considerable media interest. There are no other suspects. The accused must know the seriousness of his position. At the same time, he has many contacts in the Middle East and South America. He has, moreover, chosen a profession which best could be described as fast and loose and which is known to operate at times on the very outer fringes of morality. So I would suggest there is a serious risk of his failing to attend the trial, whatever conditions of bail are put in place. Mr. Travers? My lord, my learned friend spoke of a profession that is fast and loose and lacking in morality. He should perhaps remember that it is his own profession. My client is a lawyer. I think he was referring to oil trading. Even so, the suggestion that he might become a desert nomad or a gaucho on an Argentinian cattle ranch is plainly ludicrous. <laughs> My client 
is a married man with a 15-year-old son from a former marriage. He is of exemplary character, and he intends to vigorously contest the allegations. I'm persuaded by Mr. Travers' submissions. Bail would be granted with the following conditions. Surrender of his passport, payment of a security into court of 50,000 pounds, and a condition of residence. First blood to you? That's not what this is about, Jeremy. Maybe not for you. But let me assure you of something. I won't let you do it a second time. What happened the last time we met? It won't happen again. That's right. Perhaps this time you'll do your job properly. Well, I've got to get to Suffolk, so I'll call you in a couple of days. Thank you. Thanks for believing in me. I'll call you. Taxi! Oh, you're right. John Gerald. It is a fake name. So what's his real one? Well, here. An animal activist accused of murder two years ago, but he got off. Uh, lucky for us, they kept his DNA. Look, he's been linked to a whole string of other cases. <sighs> Philip Spall. Mm. Hmm. Liverpool Street Station, please. He's lying to you. No. No, he's not. Yes, he is. He did it. He killed her. No. No, you're wrong this time. No, I'm not. I'm not wrong. I hope you get that gun. To me, all right. What was so important on that computer that someone was prepared to kill to get hold of it? Just be careful, Wemble. He's just going to drag it all out again. Calm down. Oh, we don't have anything to hide, do we? But if a client tells me they're innocent, then I believe them. Because if I don't believe in them, if I don't have complete faith in them, then how can I do my job? You can lie. <laughs> 